one thing I really wanted to talk with you about is I, I've loved some of the commentary you've had about um, women in turf and just your advocacy for that. So I'd love to ask you, you know, more about um, your your position, how it how it is to be a woman in turf. You know, we're definitely the minority in a sense there. Um, and, you know, where your um, advocacy comes for that. Yeah, so I grew up, my dad is in the turf industry and I have two older brothers. So he, you know, was kind of always excited to get my brothers into the industry and be able to share that with, with his kids. And they didn't take to it and they, you know, they didn't have an interest in it. And so my dad decided with me, you know, I'm not going to push her to get into it and, you know, all that. So I just, we were watching a baseball game one day. He always took me to golf courses and baseball games and football games. And I was always around it and we would talk about it. So um, we would go on these tours. We were sitting at a baseball game one day and I think 80% of the conversation was about how they prepare the field and what it takes to be able to make the field look like that. So I wanted to get into it and he was very supportive. He was a little apprehensive because at this time, I think I was 15 and you didn't see very many women in turf. And especially me, when he took me on these tours, I only ever saw men. So, you know, he said, this is not going to be easy for you. There's not a lot of women, but I think you can do it. So he supported me all the way. And my parents have always been super supportive. Um, and I've just always had a really stubborn can do attitude. So I don't take no for an answer. And, um, you know, I, I went to Penn State and usually I was the only woman in any of my classes. So, you know, guys make jokes and you get a tough skin and, um, you know, you kind of learn to give it back to them and then they won't mess with you anymore. But I worked for, I had an internship with the Baltimore Orioles and Nicole Sherry is the head groundskeeper there. And she just really inspired me with how she led the crew and how she managed. And I had a lot of one-on-one -on -one talks with her about what it is to be a woman in turf and just seeing how much she uplifted me and helped me learn and um, really took me under her wing and just it really inspired me to hopefully do that for somebody else and to just uplift other women because there we are the minority in the group and there's not a lot of us so it doesn't need to be enough and there doesn't need to be a competition because there's always a seat at the table for everybody and just because someone else is doing a great job doesn't mean that that takes away from my spotlight you know what I mean so it's very exciting to see women coming up through the industry and seeing young girls that are getting excited about it. And um, so that's just been really cool to be able to be a part of and to see. Of course. And I love so many things that you said there. And we love Nicole. She, I had a great time interviewing her for one of our chats uh, earlier this year. But I love what you said about, you know, ev there's always a seat at the table for everyone. And especially within this industry, everyone's willing to help out. And it seems like women in turf are even a, a more niche group where it's like we're really, you know, um, championing each other to, to yeah. you know, be, be your own voice and not be afraid to, you know, communicate to an AD that, hey, this is my you know, opinion, and it has backed research, and this is the decision we're going to go with. And um, yeah, I loved so many things that you said. And I do think that you having two brothers probably plays a <laughs> big role in, uh, you know, having tough skin. I have three older brothers, so I can really relate to that. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I think one of the biggest lessons that it was a tough lesson to learn, but especially that, you know, Nicole taught me, um, just not walk on eggshells and you know just because you're a woman in the industry and because there's not a lot of us doesn't mean that you have to you know hide back and kind of feel like you need to um, not 
put your real self out there and you can be aggressive like the guys can and you can have loud opinions and you can voice them and just because you're a woman you don't need to hold back you know so I think that that was one of the biggest lessons that I've had to learn and just kind of coming into my own and being confident in myself I think that's something that um, as women we kind of in this industry don't necessarily do all that often we don't want to speak up or um, make our voices heard enough as as the guys do so that's been yeah it's been a really good lesson to learn definitely and um in one of my cases you know I was at a conference and someone was very confused you know why I was there and asked what I did and when I kind of explained it to them they still didn't get it so then I said you know, I make the sandwiches. I, I just make sure that everyone is fed. Like, and I just played along with it. Like, you know, yeah. you can't win with everyone. So you might as well make a fool out of them in some <laughs> sense. And, you know, I think that's something that, uh, lightened the mood for the other people around that were probably like, Oh my God. <laughs> but another thing I wanted to ask you about, I think something we have in common is we're both I, I know I'm a new mom. I don't know if um, if you're a new mom or if you have more kids. Yeah, I, I just had my first in July. Okay, and I was at the end of June. So we came oh. came into the territory at similar times. And, um, you know, especially I've, I have the luxury of, um, you know, being not on the side that I actually have to maintain the fields. I just talk to you guys about it. <laughs> so for you, you know, work-life balance is such a thing for groundskeepers and especially being a new mom. How have you kind of balanced all that and made sure that, um, you know, all avenues of your life are being taken care of? Yeah, that's, that's a really good question. I, um, you know, that's kind of something that my husband is in the turf industry as well. So that's something that both of us have really had to sit down and talk about because especially in the beginning, we would come home and it would be talking about turf and planning and thinking. And you could tell that both of us were distracted and we weren't there a hundred percent. And that's not what I want at all. When I come home, I want to be with my family and focused on my family as much as possible. So, you know, that's something that we've really had to work hard on. And, you know, just kind of leaving my work phone. I'm lucky that I have a personal phone and a work phone. So leave my work phone at the door and have it on silent and don't check it. Don't respond to work calls between certain hours. Um, so just doing that and you know, just kind of when I get home, on the way home, I'll think about work, or if I have something that I think of, I'll write it down, and then I can attack that tomorrow. It can always wait until tomorrow. Nothing that I'm doing is that big of an emergency that it needs to come before my family every day. So, you know, just kind of setting boundaries on what I do here and when I leave here, um, and then when I'm home, just be at home a hundred percent. That's great perspective. And, you know, my husband and I, we both have been home. It's like coming up on a year now, just a couple of days from a year. Oh and so setting boundaries for us is like, we're, our office is now at home. Our, you know, daycare is now at home. Everything is right here and kind of setting boundaries for that as well. Just like being able to step away from the computer or also not feeling guilty when like the kid has to cry in the crib for a little bit because <laughs> you are on the clock and you need to finish something or whatever that may be. So, yeah. you know, we have different, different experiences, but I, I love your perspective as well. Oh my gosh. I can't imagine working from home right now. Like you said, that work-life balance, that line is a lot more blurred because it's not like you're leaving your house to go and do your job. So Oh my gosh, props to you. And you're taking care of your kid while you're doing it. Oh. Yeah, he's definitely learning to cry it out in the day. I can't say the same for the night. He uh, he weasels yeah. his way into our bed almost every <laughs> night. <laughs> yeah, I don't let him cry it out at night. But during the day, he definitely gets his fair share of it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Well, this has been awesome. I really, really enjoy all your thoughtful answers. And I appreciate you taking the time to chat with us. Um Everything you said was, you know, so insightful on many different levels. So I really appreciate your time. 
No, thank you. And I appreciate you talking to me and all your questions and for sharing your stories as well. So it's awesome to be able to meet more women in turf and talk to them. And so, yeah, thank you for inviting me. I really appreciate it. Of course. And hopefully one day we get the chance to meet face to face at a conference yeah. or whatever that, whatever that may be. Yes, absolutely.